Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and in this video for you from Mortal Kombat 11, I got six little tidbits for you that you might not know. So some of these are going to be character specific, some of these are just going to be system specific, like the overall game mechanics. And if you knew these already, then hey, fantastic, you're one smart cookie. But if you didn't, then hey, I'm glad to tell you something you didn't already know about the game. So without any further ado here, let's go to a character specific tidbit. So the first little tidbit here you might not know has to do with some of the newly created variations and specifically for Cabal, the Speed Demon new variation. This is the one that has the Gas Blast, this guy here. So the Gas Blast, the main use is to do restands and combos. So uh, say just, you know, something like this. So I get my nice juicy combo, at the end I can do my gas blast, restand them so they don't get any wake up options, no up 2, up 3 rolls, any of that stuff. They just have to submit to my pressure, right? And on top of that, this variation does more damage than the usual Cabal stuff. So that's all well and good, right? But the thing people might not know about the gas blast is, well obviously you can enhance it, you know, do more damage, more frame bench, all that fun stuff, but you can just let it rock mid screen and, yo, you see that gas cloud? It's there. It persists. And what does that gas cloud do? Well, for one, it heals you. You might not have known that. Also, it does do damage over time to the enemy, as you can see. And another thing as well. It acts as a damage buff. So in a lot of ways, this is very similar to Kotalkan Sunbeam, in that it heals you, damage the enemy and if you're inside of it it will increase your damage so that does 75 normally the glaive does 60 right so that's the damage buff but there's even one more thing yet all right so here's our gas cloud we'll put the enemy in the gas cloud and let's set them to just jump they're not jumping what's up with that oh now they're jumping so the gas cloud on top of healing you, on top of hurting them, on top of giving you a damage buff, means the enemy cannot jump while they're in the cloud. So the one thing here about this is, now are you going to be doing this willy nilly every single match? Well no, because there's a little bit of startup associated with it, right? But still when things get slow, let it be known this move has a lot more utility to it than just, oh hey I do my combo, I do this at the end, I restand you, right? So yeah, that's just one tidbit for you, you might not have already have known. Our next tidbit has to do with crushing blows, and a very specific kind of crushing blow. The crushing blow where the requirement is says triggers if this move hits at maximum range. So uh, there's a couple of variations of this, uh, we're using Jackie, Terminator has one too as well. Um, and so the bionic dash here, uh, it says, you know, if it hits max range, crushing blow. So for up close, we get no crushing blow, but if we back up a bit here, roughly around this distance here, we'll get the crushing blow because she traveled the whole distance, right? And I'm here to tell you that is a lie and that is not actually what these requirements are despite what they say. So what these moves should say, which maybe it's a little too wordy, but whatever, right? Is will trigger once this move has elapsed a certain number of frames without yet hitting. So yes, if I do it up close, hey, I ain't gonna get it. If I do it from far away, hey, I got awesome, right? But I'll be able to trigger this in the corner easy peasy. Hey, there we go. We got the crushing blow. Uh, definitely close enough to not be max distance. I think that's very fair to say, right? And yet I still got it. Because once again, these style of moves, same for the Terminator. Anyone else who's ever going to get a move like this. Uh, despite what it actually says here for the uh, crushing blow requirements, the hitting at maximum distance, that is not correct. All it cares about is the number of frames elapsed from the start of the move to when the crushing blow is actually attached, right? So that is why I'm able to get that style of crushing blow in the corner. So next time you look at a move like that, keep in mind that you have a lot more possibilities to make things go with it than you might otherwise think. Now for another tidbit here. So this one you might already know, but I see people still surprised by this one all the time, especially when it affects them negatively. So crushing blows. Hey, everyone loves crushing blows, right? So like, let's turn around the easy crushing blows here. And let's say uppercut crushing blows, like one of the most standard ones, right? So I'm a tricky collector player and haha, I got you in my puddle. Now I'm gonna crushing blow you and get a big combo. And then you land, hey, where'd my puddle go, right? So nothing in this game that has any persistence. 
uh, be it buffs, be it DOTs, or just anything else that is besides the two characters themselves, will survive a Crushing Blow. Crushing Blow gets rid of everything. So for a very good visual example here, here I am, Kotal Khan. You know, I'm building my totem pole here, and there we go. Got all my totems. Awesome. And now I react you with this KB. Well, I get a nice little damage buff, to be sure. Hey, all my totems are now gone. Now, while I'm saying this, don't think this in a purely negative light, right? Because, say, if I was Devora, I'd be overjoyed, right? Uh, but say um, you're in a situation, Aaron Black has you in the puddle, right? And you manage to, like, say, Universal Uppercut Crushing and blow him then you don't have to worry about that puddle being under your feet anymore. You don't immediately have to go like, whoa, and jump out of the way, right? You can rest assured, it's gone. It's over with, it's donezo. So keep in mind, while generally, a lot of times, when you notice this, it's usually because you got screwed over by it. It can work both ways, and you can save yourself like from a damage over time death or whatever, thanks to this. So once again here, crushing blows get rid of everything on the screen that just isn't the two players. So, on to another character-specific example here. Uh, in Mortal Kombat 11, a lot of moves have gaps, and that's very much by design, right? Uh, either uh, in between the gaps, say if you block, you can stick in a button and jab someone, or you get your flawless block on and that kind of stuff, right? So, a lot of things have gaps, and I'm going to showcase this one for Frost, because this is the one I see that no one ever deals with or punches or interacts with in any way. Uh, and it's something you see a lot, so it's just uh, the plain old Frost uh, ice balls, like... So I can do my ice balls here, EX, da 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 da, and that's all well and good, right? There's a gap here. Between the first two shots and the EX, there is a gap here. And what can you do with that gap? Well, you can do something like that, right? Um, so the gap itself isn't huge, right? And not every character can do everything about it, because, you know, it's very much designed to very tight gap, so as you try to jump it or whatever, and you obviously can't duck it, you'll get smacked, right? But there's stuff you can do about it. Is what I'm trying to say. So, um, for a character like Scorpion, obviously, the teleport. That's a pretty good one, right? Uh, a character like Terminator. So, for Terminator here, he doesn't have to deal with this, right? He doesn't have to take that chip. He can just say, nah, I ain't taking no chip, right? So, once again, character specific. Not everyone's going to be able to do everything off it. Uh, it's definitely to your advantage if you know you're near an interactable. Because then you can use uh, your defensive meter, burn a bar, get some armor, and just armor right through it, right? Uh, but yeah, so that's a gap I see almost no one ever talk about. I never see anyone do anything about it. But there you go, just another little tidbit. So for our next tidbit, let's talk about the so-called magic number in Mortal Kombat 11. And that number is... Negative 5. So I did make a video about this a whiles back, but hey, that was a long time ago, and hey, maybe you never saw it, right? But uh, negative 5 is the most negative you can be and still be able to flawless block. So that's what makes it the magic number here. So you can be, you know, not as negative, like, you know, negative 3 or whatever, you can still flawless block just fine, but negative 5 against the vast majority of the cast, it usually has like a 7 frame down 1 or something, that is the most negative you can be and still be able to flawless block back. So I have Cassie loaded up here. So she's going to be doing her 4-4-1 string, which is negative 5 on block. And if I try to attack her right away on frame 1, she is going to be able to flawless block afterwards. And from that flawless block, she can go for up 3, up 2, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's just to keep in mind, especially when you're fighting people who are very, very, very belligerent with just, you know, mashing down 1 and stuff after uh, they block the move, this is the thing you want. So just... It always behooves you, no matter what situation, to know your frame data, right? It's kind of a big deal. But this, more than anything else, nine, uh, negative 5 on block is basically your crux point from being able to just, you know, perfect block and flip the tables on them. Or just, you have to know, you have to just sit and take it. So, if I do something like uh, back 3-4-3 three, three here, I'm negative 7. I just gotta accept what's coming to me, right? Um, I'm not necessarily guaranteed to get hit. But, you know, I got a block or tried to take a throw or whatever. It is decidedly the enemy's turn when I'm negative 7, right? Unless you just want to be crazy and jump or just hit buttons anyways. Uh, but once you're negative 5 or less, you always have the opportunity to flawless block. And that is why it is such an important number to know. And please keep it in mind because that is absolutely the thing that can turn the tables and win you a match. So for our final tidbit, I want to talk about combo scaling. So when you do 
uh, combo, you know, more hits, each hit does successively less damage, right? Everyone knows that. That's kind of basic, right? Uh, but what's not immediately apparent is stuff like this. So, 4 3 for Cabal, 9%. Stand 4, 7%, right? But if I were to use both of them in a combo, I might actually do more damage if I did the Stand 4 instead of the 4 3, despite Stand 4 doing less damage. And why is that? So, in this game, and I'll forgive you for not knowing this, because the game definitely doesn't tell you this stuff, right? Uh, in this game, moves that inherently launch by themselves. So, like, 4-3 knocks them airborne here by themselves, unlike, say, stand 4. So, moves that inherently launch by themselves give additional combo scaling. So, let's just take it to the corner here. I'll give you an example here. One will use stand 4, one will use 4-3, and the stand 4 version is going to do more damage. So we got 30649. So now let's do 4 to 3. And even though it does more damage, we'll find it'll do a little bit less damage overall in the combo. So that time we did 301. Now, obviously, this isn't a world of difference, right? Um, but depending on the character it can get really significant right so keep in mind so if you're using moves that launch by themselves in a combo try some other moves you might actually find yourself getting a little bit more damage in the end and hey there you have it so six little tidbits for you that you might not have already known here for mortal kombat 11 and if you didn't know them hey awesome and if you knew them already, I task you with this. Put in the comments below something you know about Mortal Kombat 11 that's not widely known to the general public at large. So you can help out and just spread the love along. <laughs> but anyways, my friends, that is it for me and that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.